Hi there, welcome to this IISSP Twister of the Day number 135. As you know, my name is Manoj Sharma and I have been training people for CISSP for a long time now. And this entire series is to help you pass your CISSP exam. It's not just about understanding the key concept of the CISSP. Practicing questions is one of a very key aspect because when you go to the real CISSP exam, these kind of skills and alignment will help you and you know give you a right mindset to answer the CISSP questions right. And with that said, this particular twister I have picked up from the CISSP objective number 5.6 that is access control, right? With that said, let's dive in to this particular question. Uh, feel free to pause this particular video for let's say a minute and I am going to give you explanation in the interest of time after 10 seconds. I hope by now you have identified your answer. If not, feel free to again pause this particular video and answer it first. Let's go through this particular question. A company wants to implement secure remote authentication. So that's the keyword, right? Remote authentication for its employees. They are concerned about the security risk and want to minimize the impact of a potential breach. So they are worried about security risk and they want to prevent the breach in future. Which of the following remote authentication method should they consider to provide a secure and known repudiable login experience uh, you know the key words here is known repudiable as well okay and this particular question is very much you know realistic question it's not something like picked out of book as well this is based on real uh, you know challenges in the remote authentication uh, see remote authentication happens when uh, you know somebody uh, want to connect to the private network by using a VPN or my, maybe by through different means, right? And for that, authentication is the important, the most important aspect. Now, based on that, as the question is asking us for known repudiable login experience, we need to drill this down based on these particular options. Let's go the, to the option number A, username and password. So username and password, I would say, is the most uh, vulnerable uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, situation there. If your username and password is stolen by somebody, uh, it will uh, lead to known repudiation all the time, right? So that's why we can simply go ahead and uh, eliminate the option number A. Second option is radius with two-factor authentication. Looks like a very strong candidate. Uh, for answer because most of the time when we are establishing a remote authentication we generally follow uh, log, uh, you know radius protocol which is remote authentication dial in user service wonderful protocol and it give you all triple a aspect as well uh, that means uh, authentication authorization and accounting as well uh, we use it a lot of the time and if we are using it two factor authentication as well it's even much more stronger but the challenge here is, you know, uh, even if you are using two-factor uh, authentication, uh, two-factor authentication can be of different type, right? It can be based on SMS. As per NIST guidelines, SMS is not the best, uh, you know, uh, multi-factor authentication type. So even though this is a strong contender, we will park this particular option as of now, uh, but we will go further and see the other options as well. Option number C says SMS based one time password OTP and that is why I just told you right as per NIST guidelines SMS based uh, one time OTP is not the best. It is one of the you know good method but it's not the best one. If you are going for an enterprise level kind of security uh, consider avoiding this particular option uh, in there right. So that is what you know we can safely eliminate this option as well. Then the last one is certificate based authentication. You know what, for certificate based authentication you need a PKI, there will be a private key, there will be a public key and this will enforce a 
four way handshake between the two parties or the two systems before the session is established and since we have it based on uh, pki we have it based on digital certificates it is the best uh, method to you know remotely authenticate it can be just for the devices as well it can also be implemented for users as well right so certificate based authentication is uh, one of the best choice here what i feel when i compare option number b with d i see that option number d is much more a stronger option than just going with d right and that is why we out of the available choices because we have to find the best one here i think uh, considering certificate based authentication is the best way to go forward i hope you are liking this entire explanation and you have the right uh, you know thing if you have a different uh, viewpoint on this particular question feel free uh, to put that into the comment and i am going to reply to your comment as well and um, you know do consider subscribing and sharing to this particular channel because every day i come up with very very important question for you which will keep you preparing and aligning you to the real cissp exam if you are somebody who is looking for a mentorship end to end mentorship for the cissp exam uh, feel free to to visit www.cybernos.com and subscribe to the cissp success toolkit which is the best program to pass your cissp in the first attempt many many people have got certified over 100 people got certified by now that's a great thing to do okay and with that said jai hind and i will see you in the next video